if I was to go back to like I suppose comedy I mean you have a gig actually uh just so I don't forget to mention in the roasting dove tomorrow and Saturday um, yeah so for anyone watching get down if you can it should be a good one um is that your first gig back for the first time in a yeah. while or yeah it's the excited. first yeah first gig first gig back in like uh i think two years first like full hour gig in two years so i'm, I'm excited and nervous at the same time but i'm excited it should be good fun that's what i was going to ask you like because to me obviously it's anyone looking at you from kind of outside would never ever think that you get anxious or nervous but of course everyone does so I was mm-hmm. saying, like, do you do you have that every time you go on stage, or what's the experience like before you go on? It's normally just the first one or two or three that mm-hmm. I kind of like. Oh, this could go anyway, or I haven't tested out this bit before. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. But then once you get into it, then it, it kind of goes. And when I was younger, like, and I was doing the gigs at the beginning, it could be, it could be the whole week nervous thinking about the gig. You know, for the, even a month beforehand, I could be like, oh Jesus, that gig's coming up. You know, I could be enjoying my day, and I'm like, oh no, God, yeah, overthinking. Like, and then, yeah. Overthinking it exactly, but now I have it down to like probably forty eight hours before the gig. I'm kind of like, so I'm trying to change the mindset, Jocko Willink, Jocko Willink style from <laughs> nervous to excited. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. I like, and I was, like, when you're doing it, like, how does it? Like, are you just so used to it now that it just flows off, or do you have a set kind of list that you're going through? Or are you just working with the crowd? Like, you'll tell two jokes you'll see their reaction. You're like, okay, yeah, that's, that's the avenue I'm going to go down there. Open this and then kind of go from there. Is it off the cuff more than you would think? It's well, you know, it depends really like, but it's good to have a structure to know what you're going to say. And then like do the bits off the cuff in the moment and like have a plenty of space for improv. Like, yeah. so everyone is different. Some people can do it word for word and some people can make it up just with the audience. They can just talk to an audience for, for 30 minutes and make them laugh. But for me, I find that like, I need I kind of need a script, but I also need to be able to improvise around all the script. So I've only found that out this this time, really. So I need I need kind of plenty of space to kind of be silly and do crazy stuff. But then if the crazy stuff is too weird for people, I need to be like, okay, I better go back to talking about normal stuff because right now I'm talking about badgers or something. And I see a man in the crowd and I see a man in the crowd in his 50s looking up at me going, why is this fucking Egypt talking about badgers? (laughs) Or something Uh like or maybe he was just looking at you. He's I've been waiting for this all night. He's finally on that. <laughs> <laughs> he's just trying to yeah, weigh up the information about badgers like this. <laughs> yeah, mm. literally. He's just like processing it. He's like, this is actually exactly. quite accurate. <laughs> um, like, and like, how, like, I suppose if I was to say what your best experience with comedy was or your worst experience with comedy was, would you know them? Would you have them off the top of your head? Um, The best one, Jesus, I suppose it, it might have been the Sugar Club in Dublin when I did a gig there. I think it was one of my first gigs I ever did, Sugar Club. And it was a great venue, but like I was shitting myself for a few days beforehand. But I, I felt like the gig went really well because I had like loads of segments. The crowd seemed to be really on my side because they probably felt this is his first gig ever. And I kind of started taking my career seriously then from that point. I thought, oh, OK, this is actually this could be my career. So that was good fun. and I, I, That was a really good moment. And then in terms of a bad moment, well, I suppose if a gig goes bad, you're kind of like, oh, Jesus, like there was one time I did a gig before in Donegal and um, it was in it was in like the middle of nowhere. So I, I was kind of get I got there fairly late mm. and I had to go straight to the venue then to set up. So as I was setting up everything, I was kind of putting I was kind of like, oh, fuck, I forgot half my props from the last gig. And I was kind of panicked and I'd already driven, I think, from I think I was had driven from Galway or maybe further to Donegal. So I was kind of tired. And then the stage it, I was on the stage anyways, delivering whatever I was saying, but there was a bit of a gap at the back of the stage and I fell off it. And then the, the projector just goes, oh, and I, the projector like slipped up and it looked like, so I was like the back of the stage going, Oh Jesus Christ. Do I pretend Lord like save that, me that, tonight? That, that, so I'm leaving or do I have to pop up and tell more jokes? <laughs> well, no, this wasn't even that long into the gig. So like I had oh, to keep no. talking. It was like 20 minutes in and I was like, Oh, and then there was like a door that kept opening. And like it kept swinging open the door. So it looked like someone was coming in and everyone would look towards the door, you know, and I was like, oh, this is going to be a long, long 40 minutes, 15 minutes more. So (laughs) it's just it's one of those things where you kind of have to just keep getting through it. And like it's like, I suppose, whatever way you want to see it, you can either be very disappointed about it or else you can you can say to yourself, I'm going to like 
use the comedy of that and uh, and kind of put it into um, put it into the stand up, you know. Absolutely, that's that, but that's the thing. It could, like that bit that was unintentional now can be put towards the next stand up act, and exactly. it's, it's a funny story and putting twists on it. Yeah, and your long drive, and it becomes a ten minute segment. And exactly, just, and there you go. And it's kind of like about finding finding the positives or finding the funny stuff in the in the bad stuff. That's absolutely. what comedy kind of is, I think, a lot that's of times. Life is, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly yeah. is, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you got to keep you got to keep finding the bits. Normally, the most embarrassing things, the things that really you find hard to talk about, they're the most funny things, you know. Well, I think, anyway. Oh, I, so, I, I couldn't agree more because, like, yeah. and it's it's a lot of people don't have. <clears throat> Like, obviously, you have a natural talent, but you have confidence as well to do any of this. A lot of people don't have that. Like, a lot of people aren't gifted with, like, the confidence to do it. So when they go to see you, they're like, my God, this this fella's, this fella's talking about everything. Like, And you're just like, yeah, because that's what people want to hear. They want to hear different stuff and people having an opinion on stuff that's considered, I don't know, that stigmatized or is usually yeah. off limits. To make fun of those situations is absolutely hilarious. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You know, in fairness to me, like, I wouldn't... Like I'd also hide behind a lot of crow and badger talk and jambons and, and stuff like that. But like a lot of jambon um, piece actually was absolutely brilliant. The, oh yeah, with the Foyd Island, just oh, stop! I couldn't stop laughing. I don't, at that. I don't even remember that one. But I mean, uh, you were talking to Paddy Hoolan, and he was like, "Right, if you had a fight night, what would you be doing?" You'd be like, "I was just throwing jambons to the crowd instead of popcorn and just like tapping the lads up." And then you were talking <laughs> about then you then you mentioned Dana White versus Scott Croker, but then Francis and Ganu uh, fighting Joe Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, talk about uh, such what a fight. shy to be talking about here. Oh, yeah. I think Joe Joyce <laughs> would take that, so he would. Yeah, he would, yeah. Oh, it's but, um, yeah, it's good. I'm just trying to talk more real stuff than, like, with this. Well, with the new stand-up, I have a lot of stuff that it's kind of silly. But yeah. I'm trying to kind of slowly get into more real talk, because I think the funny stuff is really based in, in reality, but obviously try to put the funny spin on it, too. Yeah. So it's a nice journey of self-discovery. Yeah, but it, but it is as well, because a lot of comedians or like you're obviously intelligent, but you, you're a lot deeper in thoughts than a lot of people think. And you're a lot more. I'm the best comedian out there. Yeah, but that's fact. <laughs> and we know that. <laughs> but like, but like, for example, actually, I don't know if you watched. Do you ever watch Rubber Bandits? Blind Boy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so he's kind of delved off into like very kind of heavy, serious stuff. And it's mm. like, I appreciate it. Don't get me wrong, but it's fine in the balance. <clears throat> And yeah. I think he's he's extremely intelligent. He's brilliant at what he does. But it's just sometimes his like podcasts or whatever, they'll go on for two or three hours without kind of too much comic relief, which is what made him who he was, in my opinion. So mm-hmm. striking that balance is probably what's so difficult about it when you're talking about stuff. And what do you think? Like, do you think what do you think Blind Boy is he going for the comedian angle nowadays, or is it more so like the um self-help kind of stuff? But um no, I I just see I don't see I don't really have good internet where I am, so I don't see any Blind Boy's uh, Twitches, but I know he used to play some really cool tunes on Twitch and some different yeah, he games does, and actually, stuff. Yeah, he, yeah, he'd be like, he'd be playing like Red Dead Redemption and he'd be just playing his guitar along with it. It's just, it's off yeah. the cuff madness, but that's, it's funny. You know, that's, it's, it's, it's hilarious. Yeah. I was planning to get on Twitch myself, but then, as I said, like I moved to a different place that has terrible internet connection. It's basically, you can look at a map of where I am. Yeah. The place where I am, there's no internet and then everywhere around it has got internet. So it's a, it's a dirty yeah. spot for the web. Yeah, just a dire spot that you landed in there. Just absolutely what, what were you thinking cruel. of doing on Twitch? Just game, game streaming or what was it? Just gaming, yeah, and chatting to lads from all around the world. Brilliant, yeah. Yeah, because it's just getting like, up close and personal with lads from around the world and yeah. playing playing <laughs> FIFA or something. Slightly dodgy, yeah. But, um, <laughs> but no, it's um yeah, it's massive. Twitch has kicked off massively, especially with Fortnite. And the amount of money that half half the people on yeah. there are making is actually eye-opening. It's scary, like yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I just, if you don't mind asking about social media. So you were saying earlier that like it went from passion and having fun with stuff to kind of became a job and you, mm. like, every day you have to top up, top up. But like social media actually today is a rat race. That's, that's what it is with influencers yeah. and so on and so forth. But like, like your page is hilarious. Own Colgan Fitness for anyone who doesn't know, you should know it's absolutely hilarious. Like Thanks. you see that as a job or are cause those most of them bear maybe Paddy Power stuff and stuff like your original content. Do you love doing that or like it's you say, a, well, it's like I do love doing it. Like, and I'm not. I don't want to be sitting here making it sound like I'm giving out because social media. If you can have a job on social media, then that's you're you're in a fairly good spot. Like you know, winning. There's people yeah. around the world who have a much harder like, but but like um, 
it does feel like a conveyor belt and like a wheel that's spinning all the time. And, yep. you know, the more stuff, you know, I mean, you have to kind of pay the bills too. Like, so you have to do the, you have to do the kind of the money you make inside of things too. But if you can strike a good balance between the two, I think it's fine. You know, you can yep. keep, keep to your original tone and keep to your, like your personality should be coming out of your page all the time. And that's not to say that you have to get it right all the time either. Like you can always put up the wrong thing and, you know, you can, you know, maybe it's well, that's, too that's much learning. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the problem is now we're learning in front of everyone. Everyone on social media is a bit like, hmm, should yeah. I put up that post? But like, you know, at the end of the day, like it's probably going to move on to something else in 10 years time. So exactly. That's exactly like TikTok or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Everything just evolves. And like, I think people, again, like we were talking about five minutes ago, overthinking. And it's yeah, just definitely it's, it's the it's it's I suppose your your own enemy is, is, is you like your own biggest enemy is you. And it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's cliche, but it's cliche for a reason because it's true yeah so yeah but I, also your best friend is you no yeah well it depends what day of the week it is yeah yeah well that's it you have to yeah, I was yeah, gonna say you have to make love to yourself but you have to <laughs> be fall in love with yourself yeah <laughs> no it's true though like it, it is absolutely true um i suppose actually that that brings me to this like when we were talking about instagram do you care i mean because you have massive following on instagram because eh, it's just so funny but do you care about any of that obviously in terms of business but like do you care personally whether you're famous, whether you're not famous, or do you just love being funny and, and just doing I, it? I like, I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to just be funny, but then sometimes if you put up something, you'd be kind of thinking, oh, I wish that got more likes, or I was hoping that yeah. was going to get more likes, yeah. or else you put up something and then the next day you're looking at it going, probably should take that down now again. But like then you put up something as well and it's, you know, it goes well for you and you're like, oh, brilliant. I can, I'm going to keep that doing is- this now forever, this career. Yeah. So it's just it's just an up and down thing. But I suppose the most important thing really is that like great to have the career there on social media, but then also have your own life going on where you're just doing something completely away from the phone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's well, it's yeah, it's important. Um like actually yeah. if you weren't doing this, if you weren't a comedian or an actor, what do you think you'd be doing? Selling I'd be a full time bodybuilder. <laughs> yeah, full time bodybuilder. Just ripped, ripped up and telling people I could have been someone. Yeah, I don't know, what would I be doing? Jesus, that's a good question. I haven't a clue, but I'd say I'd probably be driving a truck around Holland or something like that. Yeah, something like I just I just like the idea of having a really nice big cab for myself and a little poodle with me. Oh, and my God. partner is in the front seat and we're just driving around Holland delivering stuff while also just enjoying the, the bypasses of Europe. It's absolutely layers. Um and I can just the weirdest part is I can fully picture it as a that's, yeah, and that's I did a little knob that, on the that, steering wheel. That that might be you actually when you're done. You never, I mean, you could be me next year. You'd never know. I've seen a lot of very modern looking trucks nowadays and Uh, I've played the online games. So I think I'm ready. uh, Actually, this is, this is another one I saw. Um, Because Joe, I just, I I was interested in like to get to know a bit more about you before I asked you these questions. But like, is it true that you love playing the Tin Whistle? (laughs) It was the best thing I've ever read. It was absolutely (laughs) hilarious. I was like, that is is the most specific piece of information I've ever heard in my life. Like, I was like, that'll be you on Twitch now. That'll be you. Just playing how come I've got? How come I'm so pale looking compared to you? For a start, I I'm by a window, so I get. Oh yeah, yeah, fair enough. The sun, we get yeah, nice, yeah. It's actually rare, nice day. It's Thank lovely, you. yeah. It looks it looks nice. Um, what was going to say to the Tim Whistle? Yeah, I love playing the Tim Whistle. Yeah, I just I like to play Raglan Road, and I I like to do a couple of Lady Gaga's numbers like ever. Shallow. You're yeah, like um, so. yeah. I like a bit of Huzzier. Yes. Yeah. I worship he's, like a dog. Shana, oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. We'll be one of the best in Ireland at the moment. Absolutely, yeah. And are you going yeah. are you going out of the country for international level or what's the I European don't know. Like well, whistle? If I was to go Sporting to Europe, Irishman has to be the best. It's like hurling. Yeah, I'd say I'd have to get a bigger flute if I was going to go across Europe. <laughs> yeah, you could actually yeah, that's the, I'd say so. You probably need to be or like a didgeridoo. I've always fancied getting my lips around one of those. <laughs> so I not, we'll I see. Thought, I thought it was mad. Like I was just, I was like tin whistle. I just would not have kind of put them together. Like, but it's just. Yeah, I know. Cool. I don't. I don't play the tin whistle. Are you? Uh, I. I know you do, though, do you? No, I'm no, still... I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I wish I did. If I did, I'd be down the pub now having a session. I <laughs> seriously, oh, seriously. Tough. Any oh. excuse. See, the tin whistle is an excuse to win playing in <laughs> drinking pints. That's why it was designed. Just lastly, before you go, um, because you're a true gent, and I honestly appreciate your time so much. No, thank you for ha- having me on. I really appreciate Absolute it. Pleasure to get the chance to talk to talk to you because I've watched you since I was 15, 16. So thanks, a man. I really appreciate it. that. You know, thanks Not very at much. All. You're, you're hilarious, man, and you're a good good person as well. So it's just nice thanks. to talk to you. 
gigs going forward just before we finish up after the Roche and Dub and Galway what else do you have lined up what else do I have lined up well I've got the tour kicking off now so that'll be the first two dates and then the following week there'll be two kind of dates every week so <clears throat> once I get into the routine of that I want to I want to get back to making videos and then I'm also doing my podcast I have a podcast there on Patreon so I do just do that once or twice a week so I really enjoy doing the podcast because it's just talking and telling stories and that kind of stuff and so personal. I think I'm going to hmm? it's personalized you're not you're not being told exactly doctor. it's not doctored yeah yeah exactly it's not doctored and you can say whatever you want so I, I really enjoyed doing the podcasts and I think I'm going to over Christmas really put a lot more effort into them and you know <clears throat> I'm putting effort in already obviously but like I'm trying to make them even tighter Hone in on it yeah absolutely I, yeah. Want, I want to get in on some of blind boys turf yeah 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 <laughs> like Joe yeah, Rogan You'd be more than capable. Absolutely more than well, thanks very much. But that's the plan anyway. So that that and then a bit of stand-up next year, I'd say. So Brilliant. but yeah, social media, I don't know. I mean, I'm here I am giving out about it, but you might see me on it more than ever next year. But in my mind, I'd like to kind of spread out a bit more as well. Maybe do I, I, I completely know what you're saying. Place. It's a tool. So you can utilize yeah. it as a tool and it can put you onto another platform. But if it takes over your personality or yeah. who you are then it's exactly it do you find that for yourself have you have you found any tricky stuff with like social media absolutely i think everyone's everyone's a prisoner of the moment sometimes social media like i used to you know everyone loves to say oh, i don't care don't care what people mm. think but it's a lie because everyone to a certain yeah. degree in my opinion everyone to a certain degree does care and i get lost in it sometimes and you're trying to just throw a post just for a few likes or whatever it is and i have no problem admitting that because i think that's what it is but i think yeah. sometimes you have to step back and be like what am i doing that i want to do Instead of yeah, just going exactly. out and getting pictures with people who are this, who are that, like, you know, it's, it's, yeah. so I just, it's trying to hone back, like pull yourself back sometimes and just be like, what do I want to do? And stop getting focused on what other people want you to do or that you 100%, yeah. people want you to do. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's crazy. Couldn't, it's couldn't crazy. put it better myself. Yeah. You have to figure out the reason why you started it in the first place. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. On the money. Um. So anyways, I just want to tell you, thank you so much for, uh, for no joining worries, us. No worries, Doug. Thanks I'd for having me on. You, I'd love really to catch up in person if you ever have the time or you're ever in Limerick or yeah yeah like that I'll be in Dolan's as I said for that gig I should check the dates exactly but if if you're around send me in a message there or in send me an email actually I will of course I will of course actually I'll, yep, I'll, uh, I was going to send you a message on Instagram earlier and then I was like looking at your followers I was like he's not going to read that I was like he's not going to see that I sometimes go through them and I and I, I kind of just pick some to read out but then there's just you know so you don't want to be on the phone much. too much either so yep. email is the best way to get me perfecto um, yeah. anyways absolute Pleasure. Owen Colgan, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye.